Mirio's original. Hello and welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite unsolved mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. Who knows? We might even solve the case. I am Allie Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. I'm Maria. (laughs) (laughs) Maria's Maria's headfirst in a bag of Arby's right now. (laughs) Webcrawlers has a Patreon to get access to rewards, bonus episodes, shoutouts, merch discounts, etc. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. And you can donate as little as $2 a month to become a patron. Melissa, do you want to maybe record some episodes Monday or Tuesday or something? Yes, I do. Hell yeah, baby. (laughs) Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. I think we might have some more. Okay, we have a new five-star review from Alicia KMA. It says, boing, don't (laughs) listen to this podcast in the supermarket on a run in a waiting room or anywhere else strangers can see you. Allie will say something ridiculous and you will burst out laughing, causing the entire room to stare. It's true. Accurate. Happens every time. This is from J. Kant 94. This is Allie is my soulmate. What an Allie filled day we're having on this blessed Sunday, the Lord's Day, (laughs) September 6, 2020. Yeah. Although you guys are getting this on a Tuesday. Um, Okay. (laughs) Erios also has a hotline. Insert jingle here. 626-604-6262. It's really been popping off. Continue to leave us voicemails and we will be playing them on our mailbags. Mailbags. Check out our Discord. Also, um, check out our shop. I went to our shop the other day and I, I went shopping. Oh. Yes, you did. Yeah, I bought a hat. I bought a t-shirt. And I bought a sticker. Wow. Wow. The stickers are awesome. I have one on my laptop. They're really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I put it on my laptop too. Wow. Yeah. So go to webcrawlerspod.com and I would really suggest going shopping. Like this Bigfoot sweater is pretty cool. I know. I want to get it. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm actually pretty astounded by our merch. It's like high quality it stuff. It is pretty nice. This... Taylor Swift LaVey t-shirt is oh, like so good funny. One. I forgot that one was in there. Yeah. Um, we have a Bride of Satan necklace that's like fantastic. So anyways, there's that. Um, Melissa, who are our patrons? We have Nicole I, Joanna K, Tina T, Sean F. Do you think that's Tina Turner? Yes. Simply the best. Better than all the rest. All the rest. Elizabeth J, Kens, Brian L., Carrie L, Nina V, Emily A, Tracy T, Alicia B, Trent T, and Alexandra. Wow, thank you guys for joining the team and especially to Tina Turner. That's Thanks, Tina. a pretty big get for us. So uh, our main story today was suggested in the Discord by a listener, um, Maria's Demon. Um, <laughs> Melissa, what's our story for the day? Well, Maria's Demon posted this article about Um, The new house that Prince Harry and Meghan just bought. Yes. It's in Santa Barbara. And it's in this wealthy neighborhood called Montecito. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens to be on the old McCormick estate that's called Riven Rock, which has an Mm -hmm. interesting past that includes a sex addict and the invention of birth control. And it's also known as the McCormick sex machine or sex mansion. That's what it said in (laughs) <laughs> that machine or mansion I think it might have been <laughs> the article said machine but maybe mansion makes more sense well <laughs> the the husband in the story was a bit of a sex machine he's a se- he's a sexaholic yeah maybe i think he was known as the mccormick sex machine that makes sense but let's call it the mccormick sex mansion mccormick sex mansion well Let's, Let's get, get into, it. into it. Better than all, all the rest. rest. Such a thing as 
So the story starts with a woman named Catherine Dexter. She was born in 1875 in Dexter, Michigan. Wow. Coincidence that her last name is also the city where she was born. Yeah, did she own the town? Her family was rich. Well, they lived in Chicago, but her Hmm. mother came back to Michigan to give birth to her. Weird. Because back then, pregnant women did these things called confinement births, where they would go away For a month before they gave birth without their husbands, they would come back with a baby. Like a cat. Uh, Creepy. Yeah, it's like a cat. It would just go hide. (laughs) They'd go under their houses. Women would be found in the crawl spaces. Yeah, they would do a crawl space. Like people who were wealthy enough just like went away like their last month to give birth with like a midwife. Oh, so they could come back looking refreshed and their husband wouldn't have to see them. Yep. Yeah, because husbands weren't allowed. That Like it wasn't normal for husbands to be in the... Mm. Well, even if you watch... Never mind. No. Say it, Allie. (laughs) Say it. Well, I was going to say, I think even in some countries, like husbands still aren't allowed in the the hospital room. Yeah. Because I was going to say, like, if you watch 90 Day Fiance in Russia, in those episodes, the husband isn't allowed in the room. That's right. It's like not customary for them to be in the room. Interesting. A A lot of different traditions. Um, totally. So yeah, Catherine's family was wealthy. Her dad, Wirt, spelled W-I-R-T, Ew. was a big attorney in Chicago. Wirt Dexter? His name is Wirt Dexter. <laughs> Horrible. He was a big attorney, and he was very progressive, and he was also an abolitionist. And her mother, Kat, or her mother, don't know her name, because women don't need names. Her mother advocated they don't need names. for women to vote and brought awareness to reproductive health for women. So they were like a pretty woke family. That's pretty cool. That's dope. So Catherine's dad dies when she's young and the mother inherits his wealth. Sick. And her older brother died as well of meningitis. Scary. So Catherine was always into science, but then these two deaths inspired her interest even more in science and medicine to like learn about more preventable diseases. Cool. So then in 1896, Catherine moved to Boston to attend the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. When I went to BU, sorry. Oh, did you? I went to BU. And when I went to BU, I went to one frat party. I went to one frat party at MIT. Really? What was it like? Not fun. It was a bunch of nerds. Yeah, a bunch of nerds. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of dorks. So the MIT, where only one woman had ever graduated at the time of when she went there. It was a very male-heavy college at the time. And so Catherine pursues a degree in biology, and she became the second woman to ever graduate from the university. That's so crazy. So then Catherine meets Stanley McCormick. He is from a wealthy family from Chicago. His grandfather invented mechanical harvesters for farms. Wow, that like shucks corn by itself or something or like separates the wheat from the something else? From the wheat from the men. The wheat from the men. Do you get it, Allie, when you separate the wheat from the men? Yeah. Okay, you didn't laugh is why I asked. I just wanted to make sure that you (laughs) 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 so stanley had graduated cum laude from princeton where he was a football star and a champion tennis player wow he also went to northwestern law school then became a comptroller of his family business the mccarmick harvesting Hmm. machine company interesting and he helped in the formation of the international harvester and their company was worth over 20 million dollars by 1920 which in today's oh, money is $250 million. That's a lot mm-hmm. of cashola. So then Stanley proposes and Catherine accepts, but then she breaks up with him. 
he proposes again, she accepts, and then she breaks up with him again. And then they do it one more time before they actually get married. Damn. She was probably, he- yeah, seriously, she would make him work for it. She was probably hesitant because she wanted to become a doctor. And at that time, if you were married, there were a lot of expectations with being a wife, like having kids, taking care mm-hmm. of the home, etc. But they eventually got married in 1904. But then shit starts to go down. Stanley showed signs of mental instability before their marriage. But Catherine attributed this mostly to Stanley's family being bonkers and controlling, especially his mother, Nettie, who was a religious fanatic. No, oh, no. His, yeah, his siblings were also described as sociopaths. Whoa. Cool. <laughs> Catherine hoped that getting Stanley away from his family would help him. And so they moved to Boston. After only two years of being married, Stanley's mental health started to go downhill quickly. Catherine loved him and didn't want to abandon him, so she stayed with him. It's theorized that because her father and brother died from health issues, she had the need to be a caretaker, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stanley kept getting worse and worse, and doctors weren't sure exactly what was wrong. But it was most likely schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. Um, in it's a 1900, so any case of mental health is considered hysteria. A funny, funny side note: when I was looking at like ancestry.com, like all my relatives, I saw that one of my like female relatives died from hysteria. Oh my god, really? Yeah. Do you know that how they used to try to cure that in women? No. In like the 1800s and early 1900s with uh, vibrators. That's how vibrators were oh, created. Oh, right. I there heard that. With, yeah, um, they used to Maggie like. Maggie Gyllenhaal and. Um, oh, yeah. Right. Felicity Jones. Yeah, they used to like masturbate women to try to like <laughs> get them sane. It was just like sexual assault. It was That's so crazy. Insane. I know. Old, old time psychiatrics is just like so gnarly. Um, in September 1906, after only two. Is that hilarious to no, you, I Maria? Just, we're trying to find like Erios is doing this thing where like if we ever hear quotes to send them to our social media director in you saying 1900s site uh, psychiatry stuff is so gnarly. I'm thinking whether I should. That's a good one. I actually didn't say 1900s. I said old timey. Old timey <laughs> psychiatry is so it's gnarly. So, it's just so gnarly. It really was. <laughs> um, okay. In September 1906, he was hospitalized for over a year and was diagnosed with dementia. Catherine eventually became convinced that it was due to a hormonal imbalance Ooh. or a defective adrenal gland. But the doctors did not agree with her. What else is new? Mm. And records in the National Archives show the decades they spent fighting her and trying to diagnose and treat Stanley's condition without much progress through psychotherapy. Um, So he spent this like year in the psychiatric hospital. And then apparently like this might be going a little bit too forward, but he was in this psychiatric hospital. I think it was in Boston. And then they were taking him on a train back from Boston to California. And apparently he like broke out of his private room on the train and like sexually assaulted a female passenger. Oh God. It said in the article I wrote, like this is a little like trigger warning that he like fingered her and then just like left her in the like. You wrote an article? (laughs) Did I say wrote? (laughs) An article. (laughs) Wow, you wrote for the Chicago Reader back in the 1800s? Oh my God. Wow. (laughs) The article I read. (laughs) Sorry. Um, Okay, so the Chicago Reader summarized this about Stanley's health. Because I guess a a book was written about this. Um, Riven Rock, yeah. Yeah, this is all like kind of uh, a lot of this. And uh, the book they're trying to figure out, I think, like whether or not it was really exaggerated or how much of it was truth. Yeah, it was like a combination of both. Yeah. Um, So the Chicago Reader says about Stanley's mental health. Did McCormick really break out of his private rail car and attack a woman while being transported by a train from a Boston asylum to California? Did his sister, Mary Virginia, who also suffered from mental illness, strip naked in front of Stanley in the bathroom of their Rush Street mansion while their father's body lay lay in state in the parlor? Was the only woman he ever had sex with a Paris hooker he picked up hours after seeing off his domineering mother on her voyage home from Chicago? 
Did he sleep in a harness? Oh, Did his wife have a long-term lesbian relationship while trying to find a cure oh. for him? When he looked, yeah, there's a whole lesbian uh, That's interesting. story. When he looked in the mirror, did Stanley sometimes see a dog's face instead of his own? <laughs> have you ever, have you ever <laughs> done mushrooms and looked in the Who mirror? Who among us have not? <laughs> <laughs> no, what did you see, Melissa? It's the craziest. I mean, it's a thing. Like people tell you not to look in the mirror when you're on hallucinogens, but if you oh really take mushrooms and look in the mirror, it is the craziest thing. Like your skin, like it like moves around. Like you know that like Instagram f- face filter where like it takes your face and it moves like your eyes down and like slides your yeah. face. Yeah, like that's what it does. It's crazy. That sounds horrible. So don't do that. Can I Uh, have like a huge sidestep really quickly? Because I just came upon something that I need to share with you guys. (laughs) Let's hear it. Did you step on another rusty nail? No, (sighs) no, not yet. So yesterday I was like really, or two days ago, I was really into looking. You guys, I've told you about this, Melissa, the unidentified persons part of the coroner's website. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like if you go on your coroner's website, there's usually like the unclaimed people that it's that, crazy like, died and no one claimed them. And then like once a year, Whoa. yeah, they do like this mass burial for people that haven't been claimed. And it's all very sad, you know, mm-hmm. but I went I just went on this thing that's called like the Doe Network, D-O-E, and it's the International Center for Unidentified and Missing Persons. Oh, I've heard and of that. And they're doing basically... It's like people that were found murdered or and and no one ever claimed them, but they do reconstructions of their face. I'm just going to send you this. Oh, one. I need you guys to look at this. Uh Oh, does it this look is like just one example? It, it's horrifying. Does it's, it look like one of us? <laughs> no, just click on it. No. <laughs> oh, no. What? I'm scared. <laughs> Oh my god, that looks you, like the the. Oh my god, it look it looks like a a mannequin. Well, it looks like it a, looks like Texas Chainsaw Master yes, Mask or yes, something. Yes, that's what yeah. it looks like. And that's how like all of these people on this site look because they had to do reconstructions of their faces for the most. Oh, because they were like brutally murdered. Wow, yeah, discovered but, in 1999 in the Upper Opikau area of Punuk, Hawaii. Estimate of date of death is five years prior to discovery. Wow, so no one ever claimed oh, this yeah. person. Well, I get yeah, they found this murdered person and then like here's Whoa, here's the bones death. were excavated from a cinder cone? Isn't this crazy? So then I just sent you so this guy that I just sent you, I mean they're oh, just no. like masks. They're oh. they're they look they all look like Halloween masks. Oh no, that's so creepy. Oh, Maria, this is really scary. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, this guy died from blunt force trauma to the head. The re- the state of his remi- remains were skeletal. This guy was found in Napa County, California in 2007. He was located by a... Some of these... What? Are fake? No, I was going to say some of these are like really old cases. Yeah. yeah, like one kid's from the 70s. Oh, wow. No, I mean, there's ones from like the 1930s and like 1928. Oh, my God. Well, we should do some deep dives into this. Wow. So the victim, this victim was located in Napa Valley College by a hiker. A nearly complete skeleton was dub, uh, discovered at the construction site of the college's new entrance. And so then you, Allie just sent this little girl that went missing in 1933. Oh my God. Wait, what? <laughs> it would be <laughs> funny if one of them looked exactly like Allie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to be getting at. But wow, like this, like this one site. that I'm about to send you, what are, what do we do with this? Like what, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> with this picture <laughs> so it looks like it looks like oh a God. clay it looks oh, like a child's no. cl- like clay project for like school. it doesn't you can't that's not it doesn't look like a per it looks like a cartoon person no. yeah partial skeletal parts only like they didn't have a lot to work with apparently no, but then is that even worth it to do? I know, right? Because it looked like it took 
a long time maybe to do this rendering this artistic rendering yeah you wouldn't be like that's my friend joe like you wouldn't recognize (laughs) there's no way (laughs) there's joe there's there's joe his skin was the same color as his hair it's all the same color there's no it's just one color yeah that's silly that's a silly goose thing to do all right, sorry, continue, but I'll be looking cool at these. <laughs> right. Okay, Melissa, back, back to, to you. Me. Okay, so in June 1908, Stanley was moved along with a team of doctors and aides to Riven Rock. Which is the bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, which is the eighty seven acre McCormick family estate in Santa Barbara, California. The same location as Harry and Megan's new house. Ooh. Stanley started suffering from a paralyzing sexual obsession. He displayed bouts of violence and was considered such a threat to women that a team of all male doctors and nurses had to physically restrain him. When his wife, when his wife Catherine, his sisters, or any other females were in the room, Jeez. and Stanley had to be put into full time care. And according to T. C. Boyle's novel *Riven Rock*, he was forced to sleep in a leather harness that kept his hands next to his ankles all night so he couldn't touch his penis. Oh my oh, god. god! And allegedly. As a form of therapy, sometimes he and his doctor would mutually masturbate one another. And That's an, what I read. And another side note, apparently his lead psychiatrist had a pet orangutan. I read that too somewhere. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> this is crazy. My uncle had a pet monkey for like a few months growing up and they kept it in the basement. Oh, the basement? That's no fun. I, <laughs> it needs to be out in the jungle. I know. And then they gave it they gave it away. Yeah, well, I agree. They gave it away. They said it would it would it would make so much noise. Yeah, it was yeah, probably I wanted to get out of the basement. Get out. <laughs> uh, so they hired a team of doctors and nurses to care for Stanley at home, and their estate was full of exotic plants imported from Japan, a six-acre lemon orchard, and handcrafted stone oh. walls and bridges. And Stanley was often seen wandering the grounds, shadowed by his nursing staff. The family built a nine-hole golf course, a theater for live performances and movies, and hired a musical director. Jesus Christ. You know what I keep thinking of when we say Stanley? Stuttering Stanley. Stuttering Stanley. No, but guess again. It's close. Stanley Kubrick. Stanley no. Kowalski. No. S- Stanley, Stanley Steamer. Ip kiss. Who's that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that from... <laughs> is that from... What's that from? It's either from The Mask or Ace Ventura. Oh. Mm. The Mask. That's the name of his character in The Mask. Stanley Ipkiss. (laughs) Huh. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Okay. Somebody stop me. (laughs) Stop me. (laughs) Uh, So they had a large art collection. And Stanley was driven around in one of his Rolls Royces to the family's beach cottage at Sandyland, which is a coastal town south of Santa Barbara. Uh, But tragically, uh, Stanley's gradual mental deterioration, punctuated by periods of relative clarity, grew so bad even his wife was forbidden to see her husband. And his elderly mother viewed her son from afar with binoculars. Okay. And then Stanley developed an obsessive sexual foot fetish. He carried his slippers around the mansion in his arms as if they were live pets and had an unusual nightly ritual with his pajamas. Many of his odd mannerisms were traced back to his childhood, such as putting his hands in the toilet and drying himself until he chafed and used an obsessive amount of soap. Oh, boy. That's strange. Yeah, Stanley's uh, sister was also put into psychiatric care, so it was clearly like a genetic issue in the family. Yeah, it must be. So while all this was going on with Stanley, Catherine is spending her time becoming a feminist pioneer and trailblazer. So she starts Hmm. becoming more involved with suffrage groups. Uh, She provided funds and organized protests. 
And <laughs> what? What's so funny? <laughs> this, this next picture you sent. Oh, no. Did you send well, another? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, oh, because no. these John Doe's, no one looks like this. <laughs> oh, no. Like, these aren't human beings. These are now, they're just like doing renditions of monster people. <laughs> this is, the victim was discovered in 2003 in Florida. <laughs> that's not a real understand. person. This is like... This is like if Mad Magazine. What's the point of doing this? Was doing like police reports. Yeah, it's very Mad Magazine. Yeah, this is this is crazy. That's anything but helpful. That's not helpful. No, These it's reconstructions not. of the victims are not helpful. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like made out of plaster. <laughs> and just real quick, why is he smiling? They yeah, right. He's this dead. guy. And he's smiling from ear to well, ear. Well, maybe they wanted to show his like teeth because he had like unique teeth. Okay. Well, it's fair. Fair. Anyway, so uh, so Catherine starts becoming more involved in suffrage groups. She provided funds and organized protests, and she eventually became vice president of the National American Woman Suffrage Association. That's cool. And she later served as the first vice president of the League of Women Voters. Wow. She was also an integral integral voice in getting the 19th Amendment ratified. That's pretty sick, dude. Yeah. Uh, so then Catherine made an effort to not have children with Stanley, mostly because she didn't want to pass on his schizophrenic genes. So she became interested in birth control for women she wanted women to be able to control their own health and livelihood so they could be on more equal footing with men. And there were also rumors that she was a lesbian Ooh. because during this time, she acquired a very close female friend by the name of Margaret Sanger. I love in this time that like if you have a close female friend, you're like definitely a lesbian. Or like on a supermarket sweep, if there's like two women who are like, Hot. They're like, how do you know each other? They're like, we're roommates. It's like, sure you are. Oh, really? <laughs> I think Supermarket Sweep is the most stressful show I've ever seen. I don't understand how people like that show. Yeah, I used to watch it as a kid. Like, it was my favorite show. Everyone loves it. It's just like people running around a market. It's so stressful. It really is. Like, grab the meats. Grind the coffee. Yeah, I'm like... Oh, my God. My worst nightmare. So then she meets Margaret Sanger in 1917. Margaret is an American birth control activist, a sex educator, and a nurse who opened what would eventually become Planned Parenthood. Pretty groovy. Pretty cool. So a man was actually arrested for passing out Margaret's flyers on the streets because they talked about birth control and women's rights. And at the time, that oh was God. like, no, I don't think so. Taboo. So Margaret and Catherine became friends. Then Catherine starts smuggling diaphragms out of Europe to give to American women. Whoa. She would schedule meetings with these huge European diaphragm <gasps> manufacturers in Rome and Paris Whoa. and used her language skills and biology background to pose as a French or German scientist and place large orders for their devices. And then they were shipped to her family wow. chateau outside of Geneva, where they were sewn into the linings of coats and other garments. Wow, that's pretty smart. Yeah, she smuggled them past U.S. customs agents in New York, yeah, having successfully disguised them as fancy coats from extravagant European shopping sprees. Whoa. And so she made these trips every summer from 1922 to 1925, only stopping in 1925 after the Santa Barbara earthquake forced her to rede redirect her attention to rebuilding her husband's estate and devote her energy to helping care for him. 1925 Santa Barbara earthquake. I wonder what. Um, yeah. 6.5 to 6.8 magnitude. Whoa, that's huge, man. That's a big one. So then Catherine had a sophisticated understanding of biology and was super into medical journals. And she was seeking alternative physiological causes and potential cures for Stanley's condition. She applied her MIT degree to exploring the then new field of endo endocrinology. And Catherine mm. grew convinced that a hormonal imbalance had caused Stanley's illness. Like, she was adamant that this is what had happened. So she began to organize and fund mental health research in this field, establishing a neuroendocrine research foundation at Harvard Medical, Medical School in 1927. Damn, she's cool. I know. 
Um, it was originally called the Stanley R. McCormick Memorial Foundation for <laughs> Neuroendocrine <laughs> Research Corporation. The Stanley Ipkiss Foundation for Stanley Ipkiss smoking for somebody stop me for smoking research. Uh, It was the first such U.S. research institute to explore the link between endocrinology and mental illness. And Catherine also created a research center for the care of the mentally ill at Worcester State Hospital. Wow. And then in 1937, she starts the Planned Parenthood Federation for America, which is the basis for Planned Parenthood today. But then sadly, in 1947, Stanley dies from pneumonia. Oh, man. And his siblings, Harry and Anita, fought Catherine in court for more than a decade over their brother's vast estate and his care. That's fucked. They lost, leaving Catherine as a sole beneficiary. Good. And she inherited an estimated $40 million, which today would be oh, about shit. $500 million. Whoa. And she focused her time on philanthropy to reproductive health issues. Amazing. Um, so then she met scientist Gregory Goodwin Pincus in 1953. He was doing hormonal therapy research. Catherine started giving him money for his research, and in total, she gave him about $2 million over 10 years. Wow. By 1957, the birth control pill is created, and the FDA approves it in 1960. That's pretty cool. She ha- <laughs> What? You <laughs> see <laughs> You guys are dumb. Uh, Maria put Allie's soulmate drawing as a as one of the missing <laughs> people in the Doe Network. <laughs> I'm mi- missing from my life. I'm missing from your heart. Um, <laughs> missing from my heart. Um, so that's cool. She she donated the money essentially that got the yeah. birth control pill created. That's cool. Um, years after Stanley's death, research psychiatrists conclusively linked schizophrenia to a chemical imbalance, as Catherine had always insisted. She was right this whole Hashtag time. Hashtag believe women. Um, Catherine died at age 92 in 1967. Stanley McCormick and his wife are buried at Graceland Cemetery in Chicago. Her will provided $5 million to the Stanford University School of Medicine to support female physicians. Whoa. Mm-hmm. $5 million to the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which funded the Catherine Dexter McCormick Library in Manhattan, and $1 million to the Worcester Foundation of Experimental Biology. In addition, McCormick made arrangements for $500,000 to be donated to the Web Crawlers podcast <laughs> and <Wow>. the donation <laughs> Thank you. to the Chicago Art Institute and the donation of nine important Impressionist paintings to the Santa Barbara Museum of Art, wow. which included three major landscapes by Claude Monet. I uh, taught a after-school art program that was affiliated with the Santa Barbara Art Museum. Wow. Along with these... I know. Along with these paintings, McCormick also donated her residence, which is now known as the Ridley Tree Education Center. It is currently used by the museum for child and adult adult, adult (laughs) art classes. The Riven Rock Estate. The main house was mostly destroyed by the 1925 Santa Barbara earthquake and was eventually sold off and divided up into land parcels, with many of its buildings now serving as luxury homes. Uh Harry and Meghan's home is called the Chateau of Riven Rock. Yeah. Property values in the area average around five to six million. Yeah. So it's this whole large estate that they chopped up into like 10 separate like giant houses like it was this huge estate they lived on it was crazy i'm googling um harry their house is crazy i think ellen lives like in that area or had a house for like 30 million dollars okay yeah then i know exactly where this is i lived in santa barbara for like five six years so then this is also where Oprah has a house like yep. right near here too. Yeah. It looks like it has a big ass pool and um, a golf course. A tennis court. Did I say golf course? I meant tennis court. Wow. Have you seen the little girl's bedroom where there it's a castle? What? No, show us. Where? Chateau of yeah. Riven Rock. There's this one room. It's a little girl's room and it, there's a castle. It's, it's, it's crazy. That's so fun. Like that would have been my dream. Oh my There's god. Like the bed <laughs> oh my castle. god. There's a balcony and 
Yeah, it's like it must be but nice. No one should have the ability to have um, to build that. That's they shouldn't insane. Be allowed. Why? Well, because um, it's um, because I because I can't you know afford a lot of stuff, so you shouldn't be able to do that for your baby. <laughs> if I can't afford it, no one should be able yeah, to. No well, one should. Just, like your baby doesn't need agenda. that. Like you can give your baby a cardboard box and paint it. Pink. I agree. I used to love getting cardboard boxes. My dad would bring them home. You, from you work. still do. It's one I of your know. favorite things. Sometimes when we're recording, we give Mer- Melissa a box. We would make like it. castles out of them, like giant like, cardboard just boxes. You're so cute. Your baby says they want a castle. Doesn't mean they get a real castle. They get a box. <laughs> they get a and box. They <laughs> make a castle out of it. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> Don't give your kids <laughs> castles. Give them boxes. Don't give your kid a castle. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Melissa, if people want to weigh in about this whole like castle box debacle. <laughs> Where can be where can people reach us? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail.com or you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at webcrawlerspod or uh Facebook at Reddit. We got a Discord, the links on our Instagram page if you want to join the Discord. Yeah, and also like um join our Patreon because we're gonna yes. flip out some hot, hot episodes like we have like People who've died at Disneyland. Um, (laughs) We're going to have one about crop circles. What else do we have coming up, Melissa? Well, but there's a couple mini Chicago tragedies. Oh, sick. I also am thinking that maybe um, I'm going to just do a video later just for the gals (laughs) or maybe for boys, too. I don't want to I don't want to jump to conclusions about my new skincare regimen. Oh. Ooh, new. What is it, Allie? Can we know a little bit? Can we have a taste? No, it's for the patrons. Uh, so, damn it. yeah. Who's so clicking? you gotta be a patron. Who's clicking? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm Allie Siegel. Uh, I'm Melissa Rivenrock Stetton. And I'm Maria. Make it a box, not a castle for sushi. (laughs) (laughs) Boxes for babies. Bye. Boxes for babies. Boxes for babies. Eight, six, seven, seven. Box box for for babies. babies. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Original. Powered by ACAST.